progress. Suspects are armed and they have taken hostages. All units stand down. You want to? Yep. How the hell are you gonna get out of this? You know what this is? It's a decoy. Dealing with a different animal here, boys. Let's go, let's go! Trading up. Los Angeles branch of the Federal Reserve. Only bank has never been robbed. That's why we're gonna rob it. Gang bangers, these are not the National Bank Hollywood job. Laguna Niguel. We nail these guys. We solve all these cases. This is the crew. It's a family visit. Do we look like the types who will arrest you? We just shoot you. the heists. Sooner or later, they'll need their fix. At the Federal Reserve, billions of dollars are taken out of circulation. If we can break in and steal those old bills before they're destroyed, we got our hands on money that's untraceable. Every time I'm in the street, I hear ya, 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 ya. Back when I was nine, Joey packed a nine, pack a stand no end. They're casing the joint from the inside. They're going big. Hey! You know what this means? It means I am a member of a gang. Only we have badges. You're not the bad guys. We are. Friday. Make sure he knows it's on. Well, I'm gonna let you know now. You better wear your best. Graffiti. Anybody moves, you shoot. You understand? You advise suspects wearing body armor? Headshots only. On my signal. Let's go. Okay, I didn't bring my cuffs anyway. Hey guys, welcome to Build Series. Give them a round of applause, O'Shea Jackson Jr., Thank Pablo Schriebner. Here to talk Den of Thieves, which is out January 19th. How are you, are you guys excited to see everybody? Uh, everybody on the big screen? I, I'm, I'm real excited. You know, uh, this, this project really hits you in the face, and uh, you know, I can't wait for everybody to see it on the 19th. Yeah, it's been fun getting back together, you know? You make movies and it's like a little family unit you put together for a short period of time and then you go away. And, uh, you know, to get back together with Curtis and Gerard and O'Shea and everybody and see them now to, to sell this movie, it's, it's a lot of fun getting everybody back together. I'd love to hear what you guys thought about the characters at first and then how you got uh, attached to the movie. O'Shea, let's start with you. Start with you. Uh, I, I like the Donnie because first I get to be the cool guy who drives the cool car. You know? Wheel man, the wheel yeah, man, as yeah, they say. Yeah, so, you know, uh, that's always dope um, to be able to do uh, cool stuff that you never get to do at home. And uh, I felt like he was the most relatable because, uh, you know, I'm not a crooked cop or make plans to rob banks. So, you know, it, it, he just seemed like the dude who was caught at the wrong place at the wrong time and uh, just trying to keep my head on my shoulders and uh, away from the guns. That's a really nice, positive way of spinning what, what, he, what he said when we were doing military training. <laughs> when we were getting trained up and we were, you know, like long days and cold mornings and we would come in, they're trying to train us with the guns and stuff. And O'Shea's favorite line was, I'm just a driver. Just the driver. I don't need to know this. I'm just the driver. Yeah, why do I need to be here <laughs> diving on the ground, you know, and messing up my shoulder and doing all this for y'all? They just wanted to see me work. That's all. Yeah, what do you think about the, the role? I mean, the role, obviously, uh, you know, I was, it was an honor to get to, to bring it to the screen. Uh, this, this script has been around for like 10 or 15 years. Uh, Christian Gudegast, who, who wrote it and directed it, it's his directorial debut, and he does a very fine job. Um, he, this script has been uh, bouncing around Hollywood, so I just went and did a movie with The Rock uh, up in Vancouver, and as soon as the first time he saw me, he was like, oh, Den of Thieves, you, I was supposed to do that. <laughs> you know, this is, this is one of those movies that, like, everybody has seen over the years. And so I didn't know it at the time. I, I met with Christian. Uh, you know, he, he saw a movie called Thumper that I had done that went to Tribeca Film Festival. And he cast me for this role off of that because he thought the, the roles were, you know, there was something he saw in that that, that was relatable. And, uh, and I came, did the movie, and then eventually found out while I was shooting the movie that uh, it had been around so long that people such as uh, Sylvester Stallone <laughs> had been attached <laughs> to the same role. I'm like, it's, that's a very different movie. You know, the age gap is, is uh, quite, quite different there. Well, you did a great job with it, man. It's so exciting. It's such an exciting film to watch. Uh, bank heist movies, I mean, Inside Man, The Town. I mean, we all love these pictures. Did you guys sort of feel that when you were reading it? I mean, the, the twists, the turns, the action scenes. I mean, was it exciting to shoot it? Uh, yeah, it was definitely exciting to shoot it, and, you know, when you do a film like this, of course you have those other films in mind, but 
you know, we want to be our own beast. You know, we want to be our own uh, uh, creature with this film. So it, it, it was just making sure that, you know, uh, I know for myself, making sure that I, I, I'm here ready to work every day, you know, ready to bring it because uh, the, my teammates that I had around me were always ready to bring it on top of their game. And, you know, when you got a, when you got a squad like that, it, it, it brings something out of you. And, and I feel like we definitely brought it to the big screen with it. Uh, I think a movie like this, you know, it, it's an action movie. It's obviously a genre movie. It's an action movie. It's a heist movie. It's uh, being released in January. You know, there's a lot of things you could put against it. But this, a movie like this lives and dies. I think the thing that's unique about this movie is it, its authenticity, you know. And it does breathe and feel real. It feels like a real thing. Um, and I think that's a lot of credit to our DP, Terry. He does an amazing job. To, you know, there's a lot of handheld stuff. It feels very real. It feels in the moment. It feels like it's actually happening. Um, and if, if you don't have that, I don't think it's, uh, it's anything more than just a typical genre piece. So hopefully, you know, I think authenticity and, uh, and life is what sets it apart. I mean, I think everybody should watch it on a big screen. I know that's how I got the full effect of the laugh, sure the action. Better. It sounds better. Exactly. Have you guys gotten to watch it with an audience or with any uh, friends or family yet? Uh, <laughs> O'Shea hasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> I got, Calling I, them I, out. I, de I definitely want to see it with a crowd. I prefer to see it with a crowd by yourself. Like, it, it, it's cool to, you know, to watch a film, but I'm just going to be sitting there critiquing myself the entire time. He's going to love it because he does a fantastic job and he comes off very well. Uh, it, it's across the board. It's, it's really tremendously acted by everybody in the piece, and you're going to be proud. Um, yeah, I saw, it, I saw it in Long Beach with a, with a test audience. Um, that was, it was really fun to sit with a, a group of people that were looking at it critically, and at the end they had to give a score sheet, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so that was a fun experience. It was my first time doing that. Now, did, you mentioned the, the tactical training. What kind of tactical training did you guys do? I mean, in this, you, you guys are pretty heavily armed. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole catch with this thing is these guys are bank robbers who have gone into this after a life of special forces military training, basically. They came back from being deployed and didn't have anywhere to put their skill set. And they put it into, you know, obviously a place where you wouldn't want your kids to go. But, um, but so that's, that's the catch. And so they wanted us to be very highly trained. They wanted to look like we moved tactically and as a group. Um, and I had some experience with that because I did a movie called 13 Hours. Uh, of course, and, if you guys haven't seen it, highly recommend it, yeah. And strangely enough, you know, this is a, this is a bank heist movie, but we actually trained more and had, you know. Really? More, more yeah, than yeah, that yeah. film? But we had more in-depth training for this movie than we did for 13 Hours, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Did you actually get to go uh, behind a wheel of a Ford Mustang and, uh, and and turn around a little bit? Yeah, yeah but you know, uh, <laughs> it's a it's a lot of magic, movie magic that happens with that. Cause uh, I think we were we were definitely not driving that we, fast. We we were being towed by yeah, a on truck. On the flatbed of a truck. There was a lot of faking on going car. on when but, O'Shea was in the car. I mean, it's the look about it. That's what that's <laughs> really gets me. And, he me pretends and to drive really well. Well, really, really well. well. I mean, you guys are in the car together when he's doing this sort of a test drive, and you got you're freaking out. You're acting that out. That's well. undebatable. We are in a car together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, facts. <laughs> uh, let's talk about uh, Gerard Butler. I mean, you guys are on the same team. You guys are facing off against his uh, sort of roughneck cops. I mean, what's it like acting against that guy? Um, I had a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one scenes with Gerard, and, uh, you know, we we kind of had the situation where the outlaws, which is, you know, our crew, didn't really hang out with the regulators, you know, the, the, the officers of the movie. After cut was said, you guys yeah, yeah, stayed Christian in your sections. Yeah, divided the team, so, you know, so we have that kind of, like, mm that camaraderie with each other, but you know, that's the other side when we on the other side. And I had to deal with them a lot. They uh, they don't treat your boy too well in the movie. <laughs> and, uh, so me and Gerard had a bunch of one-on-one -on -one time. He's a complete pro, uh, but you know, hell my own. You know, you know Gerard, will, Gerard will tell you that it was set up like that and that the producers wanted to keep us apart, you know? I think that was him, to be <laughs> honest with you. I think he was like, I don't want them around me. Yeah, yeah. You know, Ooh. Keep, keep, the, keep the outlaws away from me. Yeah. Now you guys uh, square up against each other, and you square up against Gerard. I mean, who who is uh, who's the tougher guy to square up against? I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> both of them had guns, so it's it's real real equal uh, beating up Shay Day. I don't really like those. I don't really like talking about those. Uh, but it, it's definitely uh, it's fun because I know the the type of dudes that they are, and 
they're willing to bring it with me. Mm. And we know that, you know, the sooner we can knock this out, the sooner we can get out of here. Mm. <laughs> but it, it's a, it was a fun experience. I don't suggest getting beat up all the time. <laughs> but if you if you need to, Gerard and Pablo could do it. And they'll still send you the check. And they'll st- <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. There we go. Right there we go. Right there. Uh, man, your stare down was on point in this film, man. You're giving people a lot of hard looks in this film. I mean, did you practice that? Is that something? What are you thinking of when you're looking at O'Shea just like you're going to eat him? I don't think that's what it was. Is you look, you're looking at him. There we go. Did you guys get a close uh, up of that? That was frightening. I have, I have no actually. idea how to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I, st- I have a, st- a scary stare. Yeah, it's good. I will stare you down. Yeah, uh, and the actor's best weapon. Is and you a know, blank I think stare. the scene that is in the movie, the my, the real help there is the vat of acid that's in the background. Mm. You know, <laughs> I just let the vat of acid do the work. <laughs> yeah. When we say we might kill you, you know, it's really the vat of acid that is doing the job there. And you Hashtag another, vat of acid. Vat of acid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the stare down scene with uh, Fifty Cent, where you uh, have stare down everybody. Bro. You stare down everybody in everybody. this film exactly. What was yeah. it like working with Fifty? Man, he's great. He's on your side. Fifty's fun. Fifty's fun. <laughs> Curtis Curtis is a character. Yeah, always. 100%. Uh he what you see is what you get and he uh Ensign, uh the, the role of Ensign is a uh, major importance. He's the he's the heavy gunner in the movie and and they you guys have the uh the relationship though. I'm the new guy. Yeah, you know, we had military service from we served together for years and years and and come into the relationship. In in the movie I'm coming out of jail basically after uh, six or seven years served in prison, and we're picking up a relationship that had been started when we had been robbing banks before I went into jail. And even before that, we had served in the military for a long time. So there's a deep relationship between the two guys. And they have, um, you know, a deep respect for each other, and um, they're basically going to war together, you know. Um, so working with 50 is fun. He's, uh, you know, he, he keeps it light, which is good. But I would say both of these guys keep it, keep it very light. Yeah. Um, so the vibe on set, there, there was never a problem with, uh, with like people being too serious. Um, and it got serious when it needed to, and everybody, you know, was respectful of the work. But then at the same time, you know, it, there was a lot of fun to be had. I mean, I mentioned before, there's a couple really awesome twists in this film. I mean, I'm curious as actors, when you know what's going to happen, are you acting sort of in that level? Are you trying to sort of, the guy doesn't know what's going to happen at the end of the film. Is it hard to act that, or is that something that sort of helps a character? It's a good question because uh, I've, I've had to deal with this in a few different projects and I've gone about it in different, or I, it's been put upon me in different ways where when you're doing a TV series, you don't know what's coming eventually. So I've had different uh, tactics of that where, where showrunners have wanted you not to know the information that's coming and have you uh, experience it for the first time and learn the stuff as it comes along rather than knowing versus like the preparation of how do you prepare for something if you know that that thing is coming. And it's a good question. I can't give you a solid answer on it it's um it each has their own advantages i would say you know living in the moment and not knowing what's going on that brings a certain advantage to it and obviously the planning that comes with it just depends on the situation like what it is that you need to know and we can't tell you what you don't need to know because yeah. we'd be spoiling the movie straight up it's all based on the situation i you know i know that you you have to stay within the realm of the film and you know you can't what you what you read, you know, you, you that's that's you outside of your character. Mm. Your character does not know this information, so it, it, it's it's just the the battle of staying fresh within the moment for the film, and, and you know, keeping it keeping yourself wide eyed, and you don't know what's coming next, so don't act like you do. <laughs> I mean, you guys worked with a lot of great actors, but I mean, I love to hear you guys both had fathers that were in the industry. I mean, is, is there something that you learned from your parents that you sort of? Uh, that you have kept with you your whole careers? Let's start with you. Obviously, I mean, Ice Cube, who's been here a few times. Yeah, but I, you know, I having Ice Cube as a dad and, and you know pieces is like, you, you know, he's a regular dad. He do dad stuff. He tell you analogies for everything, and you know, he likes cereal at night. You know, it's just super, super dad. What stuff. What kind of cereal is Ice Cube eating at night? Uh, you know, Captain Crunch is fire. <laughs> you know, you know, if we if we could get some sort of help with Captain Crunch, but it, it, it's it's normal things, but things that you just place within the realm that you're in, and I think it helps to grow up around the business a lot. He would always tell me in the same sense of. Steph Curry's dad played in the league. Klay Thompson, Kobe Bryant, their fathers played in the league. So they were, they've been around the light. So it's not that, it's not the shock and awe of it all. You kind of push to the side and, and you're more of a uh, about your business type attitude. 
How about you, Papa? Uh, I mean, my father wasn't really into the industry. He was an acting teacher when I was growing up. So but he, he, you know, it was always around when I was growing up and I saw it as a thing. But I would also relate it to, I guess, my brother's also in the industry. So I've, I've also dealt with, you know, seeing him uh, in the limelight and stuff. And it's, um, you know, it, it is what it is and you approach it how you do. I've, I've talked with O'Shea about it uh, at the end of our experience here and, you know, it, I think this guy is a real talent and has a real shot at being something extra special, you know? And um, and it doesn't matter who your dad is at that point. It doesn't matter, you know, where you came from and, and who your father is. And if he brought you into the business, the most important thing is to cultivate your talent and take it seriously. Absolutely, I agree. I mean, you do have a crazy couple of years coming up. Both of you guys do. I mean, the Godzilla movie, the Godzilla sequel, was like filming a, on a project like that. Oh, it's harder running from stuff you can't see. <laughs> like, and Pablo is what you're saying? Pablo yeah, is, like, is like, easier to run from? Way e you know, getting beat up is right, way easier than, like, running from, you know, uh, uh, wind and rain, which is just a guy with a fan and a hose that's <laughs> directly on you. And you're looking at this H, and it's supposed to be, like, over, you know, 100 meters high and, mm. and all this other stuff. So it's, you know, Den of Thieves had its challenges, but Godzilla, y'all beat me up too, <laughs> you know, and, and running in Epsom salt, pretending it was snow. <laughs> what, I mean, what can you tell us about that? What, what's coming up out of that? Oh, uh, it's it's going to be the, for monster films, this thing is like a pay-per-view. We got four <laughs> monsters. It is not just Godzilla versus one guy. It is Mothra. It is Rodan. It is King Ghidorah. The Bro, was that was that all? Can you say all that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's okay. all, it's all in a so It's all in a right You just Come spoiled on. some I shit. You, I got you. Yeah, no problem. Yes, Pablo sure. got really concerned. Yeah, I did. I was like, like yo, stop. Over there. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm I don't good. even know what studio that is. But I'm like, don't <laughs> stop. They're going to be mad at you. Oh, but, you know, it, it was a great experience. You know, I'm a, I'm a monster movie fan. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to, to be with the, the G-Man, it was, it was everything. Yeah. And uh, Pablo, I mean, first man playing Jim Lovell. I mean, what's it going to be like that? I mean, tell us about that project. Uh, that's a, an amazing group of people to be around, you know. Amy Giselle, I mean, incredible yeah, director. Yeah, he's coming off of winning the best, uh, best director for Oscar, youngest person ever to win that. So to get to watch him and Ryan together, uh, they have a real deep connection and, and like a lot of unspoken stuff. It's, it's really nice to watch um, a director and actor that are so deeply and intimately connected with one another. Um, so that was an honor for me to get to be around. I know there are a lot of uh, American Gods fans out there. I mean, what can you tell us about that next season, man? Uh, I can't tell you anything about right. it because I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> Keep them in the dark. Um, <laughs> uh, I think we're going to start shooting at some point uh, this year, but I have no idea when. And, um, and when we do, you know, uh, hopefully the Mad Sweeney fella will be uh, a big part of it. I hope so, too. Well, let's uh, turn it over to the audience for some questions. What was it? Uh, hey, guys. Um, you guys just got light. Yeah. Hey. Wow, I can see uh, you. All those people here. Every Whoa. One of them. Uh, so I had the chance to see the movie already, and um, yeah, it was great. And I noticed, even though you guys are playing tough characters, uh, that there's a lot of vulnerability and humanity uh, in the characters, especially like family issues. Um, was that something you guys had talked about or knew going in, or is that just something that you wanted to bring in? Like uh, within with to your own self, like to make the characters more fleshed out. Uh, I think it, the the movie's only interesting if uh, if people have flaws, you know. And this movie, especially, like again to talk about like genre movies, you know, it's an action movie, it's a bank heist movie. So the, in usually in those movies, the good guys are the good guys, the bad guys are the bad guys, and we follow each through, you know. Uh, if this movie is any different, it's that it blurs the line between the two, you know. The the good the guys who are usually the good guys, the cops are responsible for uh, a hell of a lot of terrible behavior that maybe takes your allegiances away from them a little bit. And the bad guys, who are usually the robbers, uh, have things about their personalities and things about their lives that you maybe can connect with a little bit more. So if there's anything different about this movie, it's that the, the, the lines are blurred, there's a little bit more shades of gray, you know? So in terms of... Uh, what your question about you know human touches to the character it's only interesting if you have that to me if if not it just becomes uh it just becomes a normal popcorn fest cliche shoot them up yeah yeah we well, guys definitely did that next question hi so um out of all of you who's the best shooter <laughs> <laughs> i mean in the movie it's pablo uh 50 <laughs> <laughs> had to be said 
Come on now. Everybody, who's the best shooter or who's it, the right? best at getting everybody shot? Everybody was thinking I mean, that. <laughs> we know the history here. Oh, savage. <laughs> Yo, I'm a vote. I'm a vote for 50. That's my <laughs> uncle Curtis. And it just seemed Somebody's like the protecting answer. their butt right now. It was now. the obvious answer, bro. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I ain't never shot nobody. Oh, <laughs> uh, great question. I'm, I'm a great. no comment that yeah, There we go. <laughs> I'm a no stay comment safe. beyond what Sorry said. Not even go. two mile. Um, <laughs> one last question. One last question. Hey, what's up, guys? I uh, actually got a chance to see the film as well. I thought you guys were amazing. Um, <laughs> where, where, where? The studio's out there doing work, screenings? man. What's going on? Huh? On There's those, some special screen is going on. Yeah, on those yeah. New York corners? Exactly. You know it. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, uh, like, which scene for you guys was the most, you know, grueling or difficult for you guys to shoot? Every scene Che was in. Yeah, for for sure. You know, uh, I think that that bank, that that first bank, uh, Pico Rivera, that was a long... Oh, that was the most grueling for me, yeah. Yeah, that was a, you know... You were the one getting beat up all the time. Yeah, I, I definitely got beat up a lot more than everyone in the movie. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my, my hotel scene, uh, Gerard, being the professional that he is, didn't really want to choke me. And, you know, <laughs> me being the... Idiot. The, you know, yeah. The idiot, the, the wrestling fan, and the, you know, <laughs> little brother that I am. I, I, you can choke me out. It's perfectly fine. You know, so uh, we got to go for it, man, because we all want to go home. So you have to really get this. And, you know, me and him had a talk. And, you know, we really got down. There was a couple of times I had to push his arm up, like, nah, get in there. So, uh, yeah, that scene sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, O'Shea didn't get choked for nothing, so let him watch yeah. Watch Den of Thieves yeah, in yeah, theaters please. January 19th. Another round of applause for our guests, guys. Congratulations on a great film, guys.